This is a video of a spreadsheet about a lab that is typically done in high school physics when you're studying conservation of momentum. Be sure to click on the link in the description of this video to have access to this actual spreadsheet yourself. Let me describe what's going to happen here. The, this and this over here are sonic rangers. They bounce sound off of those boards and that comes back and knowing how fast sound travels and the time between when the sound left and the sound came back, these little devices can measure how fast an object is going and, and what its position is. So, and then these little carts here, right now there are, is a Velcro uh, facing each other on the carts and when the carts collide into each other, they will stick. You can flip both carts around and there's powerful magnets that will make the cars bounce off of each other when uh, they collide. And if they bounce off of each other, that's called an elastic collision. If they stick together with like Velcro, that's an inelastic collision. Now, one thing we have to be careful with, with the data from this lab is it is a little misleading. Because we're talking about momentum, and momentum is a vector quantity, momentum to the right would be positive, but momentum to the left would be negative. So when these two carts collide, uh, we're going to do the elastic collision first. So when these two carts collide, initially this cart will be traveling to the right, and this cart will initially be traveling to the left. They'll hit each other, bounce, and this will go off to the right, and now this one will go off to the left. The problem is these data, these uh, sonic rangers don't know the difference between left and right. They only know if an object is coming toward it or away. And toward, if, if this object is coming toward the sensor, it's going to measure it as negative. If it's going away from it, it would be positive. So as these two carts come toward each other and collide, both carts are going away from their respective sensor. So the data here is of both carts. They're traveling about the same speed, and the data said that both numbers were positive, but we realized that one of those was traveling to the left. So we have to be careful and, and make that the correct number negative. After the collision, this one will be traveling to the right, so the velocity should be positive, but because it's coming toward that sensor, it would give us a negative number. And, and same thing here. This is going to be going to the left, so it should be negative. And after the collision, it will also be coming toward that sensor. So it did get it negative. All right, let's look at the data here. What we're trying to see is does the total momentum before the collision equal the total momentum after the collision? And when I say the total momentum, it's just the momentum of one cart added to the momentum of the other cart. So here we have cart one, kind of this mustard color, and that's uh, this data there. This is the mass of the cart, just a little over half a kilogram, and it has a velocity of 0 0.250. And when I hit enter, it turns green, and that's because the, that is the correct value for that cart initially. I do have these cells programmed to turn green when you get them correct. The momentum of that cart is just simply the mass. You could put an equal sign or a plus. It'll work either way. It's mass times the velocity. Okay, And that would be the actual momentum of the cart. Uh, and it's a positive momentum because it was initially traveling to the right. So for cart two here, uh, this is before the collision, it's 0.275. And if I hit enter, uh, there's a mistake. It's not 0.275. And hopefully you uh, picked up the mistake already. It should have been a negative 0.275 because that cart was gonna be initially traveling to the left, but it was going away, so it made it a positive number. We just have to put a negative in there to indicate it was going to the left. And we can go ahead and say, I'll, I'll do an uh, equal sign, um, mass times velocity, and that's the momentum of the other cart. 
Uh, it had more mass and it was traveling a little faster, so it had almost twice as much momentum as the uh, other cart. But we can go ahead and find the total momentum. It's just going to be this momentum plus that momentum. We'll add the two is the total. And that would be the total momentum before the collision. One was going to the right, one was going to the left, but there was a, a net momentum to the left before the collision. All right, so if cart one was initially traveling to the right, after the collision, cart one is going to be traveling to the left. So this is cart one, and it said it was negative 0.388. Um, and it is true, we, we, we can go ahead and keep that negative there because it was traveling point, th um, I had that, 0.338. Okay, 0.33, oh, sorry, 0.388. Got to get the right numbers in there. 0.388. Ah, now we're good. Okay, and I guess one thing I can do is uh, I can just copy my formula. Uh, this was a formula that multiplied those two numbers. So if I just hit Control C and Control V, I'm going to put a formula in there that's going to multiply those two numbers. Okay, and um, let's go ahead and plug in the right number here for the velocity of Cart Two. Cart Two is going to be heading to the right after the collision. It said it was negative because it was heading toward the sensor, but I know that should have been a positive number. Point um, zero. Uh, 8, 7. Okay. And because I hit control V, I still have on my clipboard that formula. So if I, uh, because I hit control C, I still have it on my clipboard. So if I hit control V, um, I'm just pasting the formula that I'd copied earlier and it just multiplies those two numbers. So the total momentum, well, I could get away with it here too. This was a formula that added those two cells. So if I just hit Control C and Control V, it's going to be a formula that adds those two cells. And we can see that the momentum before was a little bit bigger than the momentum afterwards, but they're pretty close. So we can go ahead and figure out how close those two numbers are by finding the percent error of difference. We don't care if it's positive or negative, so I'm going to type ABS, that stands for the absolute value. I'm going to open parentheses two times, and we could make an argument saying that before should equal after, or after should equal before. If, the, if you could make an argument either way, then you can call either of those two numbers your accepted value. So I'm going to make this my accepted value. Percenter of difference is accepted minus the obtained. I have to close parentheses so it can finish off the subtraction and then I need to divide by the accepted value and because I have two open parentheses I need two closed and there we go and we're at 3.37 percent error which is not too bad okay let's go ahead and we're done um, anytime we're under five percent error I'm, I'm very happy with that so let's come on down here and we'll do the same thing for this other scenario where it's an inelastic collision. So let me just describe that one again. I think it was cart one. This cart here is going to be initially stopped and this cart is going to collide into it. But instead of bouncing back to the right, the two are going to stick together and they're going to move off together to the left. So let's keep that in mind with our positives and negatives. So the blue cart here had a velocity of zero. I could, I could multiply those two numbers or I could just do control C, control V. And I'm gonna go ahead and put do that here as well. And we just need to type in the right value of the cart here. So this is before the collision. The, the cart number two was heading to the left. So its velocity was a negative 0.263. Okay, so this uh, the cart one was initially stopped, so it had no momentum. Cart uh, two was traveling to the left and had that momentum. So we can go ahead and calculate the total momentum. That was a formula that added those two. So if I hit Control C, 
control V and um, that would be the total momentum before which is just the one cart. Now this number here is the, I guess I already typed it in here, the combined masses of the cart is just the mass of one cart and the mass of the other cart, those two masses stick together and they have this mass. And after the collision, it said that one cart was moving at plus or 0.161 and the other was at negative 0.61, or 161. Um, but that's because those two carts were moving together that way. They were moving toward this sensor, but they were moving away from that sensor. So that's why we have the same value, but just one was plus and one was minus. And they were moving to the left, so we're going to type in the, the negative 0.161. Okay, Oop, I typed in an extra two there. There we go. All right, nice when those cells turn green when you got it on the right track. The combined momentum is, I can go back and copy this formula, which just added those two, put it in here, and populate that for me already. So this is what the momentum was before. This is what the momentum was after. So now let's go ahead and find a percenter of difference. And I think as long as this formula here, we had these two in the same uh, positions and distances apart, I could just copy that formula and paste it in right there and it should work. Okay, so uh, almost 5% error of difference and it's getting a little higher, but that is actually to be expected. That momentum isn't as well conserved when you have an inelastic collision. The reason being is uh, these things tend to want to fly apart and when they when velcro is used to hold them together uh, there's energy that is absorbed in holding those together so the momentum is going to be maybe just a little less afterwards than it was before there are some analysis questions for you to do down here uh, some of them won't turn uh, if, if it is a question where you have to type in words and answer uh, it won't turn green but if it's a numeric value, then it will turn green if you get it correct. So that is conservation of momentum in a lab that's typically done in high school physics.